This is five on your side at four, focused on you. Right now at four, get ready for more heat and more humidity. A stretch of 90 degree temperatures expected over the next week all across the St. Louis area, and there's little relief in sight. We want to thank you for joining us. I'm Brent Solomon. K Quinn has the day off. With these hot temperatures, you'll want to protect yourself, especially if you work outside. Meteorologist Gary Frank is in for Scott Forrest. He joins us now with a first look at the forecast. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, we felt this this afternoon. It started to warm up just a little bit. We've been this hot already this season, but you look out west, and that's kind of a telltale sign of how the heat continues to build. And eventually, temperatures like that are headed our way. Not just yet, though. I'll look at areas that are already under a heat advisory. Uh, for Thursday and it's out to the west. We're not involved in any of that, but it's something we haven't talked about in a while. And you know, while you don't need me to tell you that it's hot, it's the fact that it gets hot overnight and it gets maybe just a touch warmer each afternoon as we start to add that humidity. As far as cloud cover providing us any sort of shade, nothing going on right now. That storm is not going to impact us, but that's an area of concern to the north that we'll monitor for tomorrow. Now temperatures right now have snuck into the 90s. We're at 91 right now, a south southeast breeze at around 10 miles an hour, the dew point in the low 60s. And it's that temperature and dew point combo that we'll monitor closely, not only into this evening, but specifically over the next few days as we see that add to our heat index. Now temperatures still remain warm and that's one of the key factors remaining warm overnight. We'll discuss why we may see heat advisories, excessive heat warnings in our future down the road and our next chance for maybe strong to severe storms as a result of that heat and humidity. Oh wow, warm into the night. Remember you can stay on top of the forecast any time of day. If you text the word weather to 314-425-5355, we'll send it right to your phone. Now at four, we're following breaking news. Three Illinois deputies and a suspect were hurt in a shootout in northern Illinois. This happened near Dixon, which is about four hours north of St. Louis. The Ogles County Sheriff's Office says deputies were shot while responding to a report that someone inside of a home was threatening to kill themselves or others. This happened inside of a gated community called Lost Lake around noon. At least three people went to the hospital. They're in good condition. Illinois State Police say there is no threat to the public right now. We'll keep you updated on this one. And you can look for those updates on air on KSDK.com and on the Five on Your Side app. Happening in just a couple of hours, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers releasing new details about its cleanup of radioactive waste in North St. Louis County. That contamination is connected to the first atomic bomb. Our Justina Cornell joins us live from the Florida Center Municipal Court where this is all happening tonight. Fill us in, Justina. Well, Brent, those doors open at 530 and that open house starts at 6 and before the season has even started, we're already hearing reaction. Now we just got back from a tour with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The agency took reporters to their current project along the contaminated Coldwater Creek ahead of tonight's open house in Florissant. Now recently, the Army Corps said it finished remediation near Jana Elementary. The agency removed more than two Olympic sized pools of radioactive waste along the banks of the creek near the school. Now last year, school leaders announced Jana would remain closed after conflicting reports that radioactive contamination made its way onto school property. Goal coming out of this right is transparency and communication. I'll engage with anybody that wants to engage. I think collectively we're all stronger to move forward and, and so that's what our team's trying to do, right? And I think it's important for folks like the Army Corps of Engineers to align real people with the samples that they're pulling away from the creek and the radioactive waste. Uh, the two cannot be separated. Yeah, Justina, that PTA president has been vocal since day one. Uh, before you go there, let us know about other efforts. We know there are other active efforts helping to really get help for all these people affected by the contamination. Well, one local advocacy group named Just Moms STL is in Washington, D.C. right now fighting for compensation for radioactive waste victims. The program that was meant to do that and has been doing that since 1990 just expired on Friday. So they're fighting for more legislation on compensation. Reporting live, Justina Cornell, five on your side. A very important fight, Justina, thank you. New developments now in a deadly shooting in Wentzville. Investigators say the suspect and victim were romantically involved with the same woman. Officers were called to that shooting around 1030 last night on Hidden Valley Drive. That's near Wentzville Parkway. According to court documents, a woman told police she was the on and off girlfriend of the victim and had started dating the suspect, Carlos Hood. Last night, the victim arrived at that home and got into an argument with the woman. 
Just minutes later, police say Hood shot and killed the victim and then took off. After hours of searching for him, officers were able to catch Hood with the help of a neighbor. They recognized the subject on camera uh, that, that, that wasn't known to them. They knew we were looking for somebody in the area working this investigation. The detectives went over and, and reviewed that and identified our suspect, uh, confirmed that that was our suspect. So then we closed in the perimeter uh, on that area and thankfully we were able to take him into custody safely. Hood is now charged with first degree murder, armed criminal action and unlawful use of a weapon. Five on your side is Megan Kernan is getting a reaction to this deadly shooting and arrest. So look for her reports tonight on five on your side at five and six. Right now, the city of St. Louis is considering a new tax on short term rentals. According to our partners at the St. Louis Business Journal, Alderman Brett Narayan's bill will put a fee of a dollar and fifty cents a night on short term rentals. Now, that money would go to the city's affordable housing fund, which awards loans and grants to develop housing projects. It would also put the fee question on the November ballot. Opponents argue if this fee passes, short-term rental operators would pay more taxes than hotels do, and it would not fix the city's housing crisis. We have some mixed news on the economy. New numbers show annual inflation cooled last month, and the Federal Reserve unveiled its latest decision on what to do with key interest rates. NBC's Bree Jackson to break it all down for us. New numbers show inflation may be easing its grip on the economy, but prices remain high. Jess asked Tiani Craig, a realtor and a mother of two. It's a lot to balance, you know, between not making as much in the market and trying to keep the, the family going. The Federal Reserve announcing its latest decision on interest rates. We decided to leave our policy interest rate unchanged and to continue to reduce our securities holdings. A decision affecting everything from credit cards to mortgage rates. We need interest rates to go down. We need mortgage rates to go down. Consumer price index data released today paints a rosier picture, showing prices ticked up just 3.3% in May compared to the same time last year, a sign inflation is cooling. The economic news follows last Friday's jobs report, which was much stronger than economists expected, with unemployment remaining at a low 4 percent. Still, families planning vacations this travel season are feeling the pinch. We jumped on this really good hotel deal in uh, Dominican Republic earlier this year, but now we can't afford the plane tickets to get there. Financial experts say this could be a summer of value for consumers. A lot of the big uh, retailers are actually cutting prices on a lot of things. You'll see goods prices maybe start to retrench and go back. More good news, falling prices at the pump may provide some relief for those considering road trips. In Washington, Bree Jackson, NBC News. Well, today marks five years since the Blues won the Stanley Cup, when you can rewatch the long-awaited parade down Market Street. Hamilton returns to the fabulous Fox this summer. How much you'll have to shell out to catch a show. But before you hit the pool with the kids, a warning about a rise in drownings. The St. Louis group helping provide life-saving skills for parents. 